In this episode, we ask the question, what external adaptations do pandas have for their unique diet? Hey, Josh Bernstein here. I'm at the Smithsonian National Zoological Park. The National Zoo is located in Northwest Washington, D.C., where 2,000 animals live on a 163-acre urban park. I'm here to see the zoo's biggest attraction, giant pandas. There's the male Tian Tian, the female Mei Xiong, and their baby girl, Bao Bao. Giant pandas are truly unique. They are bears and should be carnivores, but they mostly eat plants. I want to know what type of external adaptations allow them to do this. To explore this question, I've arranged to meet panda caretaker Marty Deary. Marty's job is to tend and feed the giant pandas, which means providing their main food source, bamboo. Come on into our bamboo shed. Okay, nice. Oh, it's humid in here. Yeah, so we keep it um, nice and humid by misting and running air conditioning. That's the noise you're hearing. Each bear can spend about 13 to 16 hours a day doing nothing but eating bamboo. It's easily 90 to 95% of their diet. They need to spend a lot of time eating it just to get the nutrients they need out of it. More than five million years ago, giant pandas began eating bamboo, but no one is sure why. This change required them to physically adapt to a new diet. Bamboo is tough, hard to chew, and hold. For example, pandas have developed an oversized wrist bone that serves as a thumb, called a pseudo-thumb. This allows them to hold bamboo and strip the leaves from the stalks more efficiently. Pandas also have dental and skull adaptations, such as small canine teeth, flattened molars, thick skull bones, a very round cranium, and large jaw muscles. These allow them to chew the tough bamboo they eat. Can you show me how the bamboo goes from here to the panda? Absolutely, let's go. Marty instructs me to grab a bundle of bamboo and place it on the floor of the shed, prepping it for transport to the weighing area. Okay. So the best way to move it is just to literally pick it up and kind of hook it right onto your hip yep. and just pull. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is actually put it right here on this scale. That's good. And then we just see how much there is. Huh. So you've got 10 kilos. Just about 10. OK. And how much do they get at a time? So she's going to get 18 tonight. While bamboo is a large majority of a panda's diet, they're also fed other plant-based foods for enrichment. By varying the panda's diet, caretakers ensure that they're not missing any vital nutrients or minerals. Hi, so you said 90, 95% of their diet is bamboo. Right. What's the other 5%? Well, the other 5%, we can go and see it if you want. It's in the kitchen. Lead on. Ready? Yep. Right. Marty and I head to the kitchen where the other foods are prepared. I'm gonna show you some of the other stuff that we feed our pandas. We wanna make sure that nutritionally they're getting everything that they need. Carrot, understand, mm -hmm. nothing too exotic. Mm -hmm. Apple, and, and what's this? this it's is... sweet potato. We cook it because for whatever reason they won't eat it raw. How much uh, vegetables and fruits? It varies on the size of the animal. So okay. Tian Tan or male gets more than Bao Bao who's, you know, Maybe. he weighs 280, she weighs 60, so. Right. Okay. We also feed them something called a leaf eater biscuit. A leaf eater biscuit. Leaf eater biscuit. Soy protein, Soy. primarily. There's other things in it. Is there anything I shouldn't be eating? I don't know, hopefully not. Seriously? No, okay, you're, hey, you're, you're good. good. You're good. I've eaten them. You have? I don't want to eat them again, but yes. Yeah. Tastes like cardboard. Yeah. By varying the foods, the keepers have created a diet to keep the pandas healthy and happy. The pandas even get dessert. So this is what we call a fruit sickle. It's just dilute apple juice with some apples and pears cut up, and it's a treat. Think of giving dessert to a child. That's the afternoon pick-me-up. Exactly. Like the cookie. Exactly. We usually give the popsicles um, sort of at a time of day where we know that they're starting to look for something, but we're not quite ready to give them like their next meal. It just so happens that that time is now. And Marty has offered to let me serve Tian Tian his afternoon snack. Tian Tian! Okay, wow, he's, he's totally following the yeah. sound of your voice. And, so, I, and the only rule is do not hit Tian Tian. Don't, don't hit the panda. <laughs> okay. Don't hit the panda. And just basically go the right there. Incident. Yes, kind okay. of up the hill from him a little bit. It's not the distance that concerns me. It's my accuracy and the crowd's watching. I don't want to hit the nation's beloved giant panda with a block of frozen fruit. But what if it rolls down? It's a he'll, he'll, it. he'll find he'll it. He'll find it. We're good to go? Go ahead. Yeah? All right. This isn't that very far, but I'm just going to. Oh, you can catch it. Is that good? Yeah. Does that work? Yeah. That's so... good. View. Like The public will be light, be happy if he sits there perfectly. Hi, <laughs> fed Jan Jan. <laughs> You're welcome. He's very happy now. Honestly, I'm grateful I didn't hit them. So what external adaptations do pandas have for their unique diet? 
We learned today that giant pandas are carnivores, but they have modified paws, skulls, teeth, and jaws that help them eat plants. But these adaptations are only part of the story. The panda has amazing internal adaptations, too. In the next episode, we'll explore how pandas cope with eating low-nutrition bamboo and go into the panda yard to see what the final product of their digestive efforts looks like, namely, panda poop.